today on Foundation Lady, I will be sharing with you five foundations I will not be wearing in 2023, including a couple I reviewed favorably and have since changed my mind on, and one choice that may even be a bit controversial. Let's jump on into this juicy vid and see which ones just didn't make the cut. Let's start with the very first video I ever presented on this channel. Back when I used to play the jazzy 40s music underneath my videos, you know, before I knew better. It's the Very Valentino 24 Hour Wear Liquid Foundation, and this is one of those that I've changed my mind on. When I reviewed it, I actually gave it a pretty good review. I think part of that was because, you know, it was my very first video, maybe I was a little overly enthusiastic. But when I went back recently and I've been looking through my old videos, I looked at the pictures of this one, especially the pictures outside, and I thought, oh, girl, that does not look good on you, <laughs> especially outside. You can see that it just looks really dry on my skin. Additionally, this one is really hard to blend. And I believe that that's what makes it transfer resistant, which is good. But I just, you know, the older I get, the less I want to tug at my skin. And I found it was kind of hard to build up. I had to do it in very thin layers. And if I used a brush, you can see here, I'm really like mm, trying to pull it down my skin here to try to make it blend. So really those are the two biggest things about it that I just didn't care for. Hard to blend and just really very, very sticky. I have noticed a few pretty good reviews on it, and I think if you have maybe a little bit younger, less textured skin, maybe even some oily skin, this might be a good one for you. If you'd like to try a dupe that I think is really similar to this, just to give it a shot to see if you like this type of formula, the Revlon Color Stay Light Cover Foundation. You might want to try that out first just to see if you like the formulation and how it works. You know, this was supposed to be a hydrating formula. I really didn't find it hydrating at all. It's semi-matte, medium coverage, all that's accurate, 24-hour wear, and it comes in 40 shades. So there's good shade options for it. But like I said, just it, I just didn't like how it looked on my skin. And now moving on to the foundation that broke my little heart in two. The Lancome Tint Edol Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation, which I am putting on in the shade 120 in in this video. Holy rich ladies that brunch. This is so heavily perfumed, it made my eyes water when I was putting it on. And as I stayed in the video, which I will link below, I'm not that sensitive to fragrances. So you know that has to be very perfumed to affect me like that. This is a buildable medium coverage foundation. It's, it comes in 30 shades. It's $47 US and it's supposed to provide a healthy glowing finish. Right there in the name, Care and Glow Foundation. Really two reasons why I didn't like this foundation. Number one, fragrance. Number two is the finish. There was absolutely no glow in it for me whatsoever. And in fact, almost seemed like a matte foundation. To prove that point even further, there are some foundation reviewers that I absolutely love that considered this so wonderful, it was almost a holy grail foundation for them. And those reviewers have oily skin. So I almost wonder if that was just a little bit of like a missed marketing opportunity by using the name Care and Glow. Because you have people like me with kind of drier skin who think it's gonna be like this new NARS Radiant type foundation or the Estee Lauder Double Wear Sheer that's you know, light and glowy and dewy, when in fact it really runs a little bit more matte. So if you have oily skin, you know, this could be a holy grail for you. You may love it. For me personally, I found it hard to blend, especially over any areas that were a little bit more dry. It was a little bit patchy on me. It just didn't work for me. But if you're curious why it broke my little heart, it's because when I was younger and I would walk through the department stores and I would look at all the makeup counters, I would think, when I grow up and I'm rich, which I'm still waiting to happen by the way, I am only gonna wear Lancome because I just thought it was so luxurious and so beautiful. And to a great extent, I still do. I think they make wonderful makeup products, not just foundation, but makeup products and skincare. So I still think I have that little dream in me, which is why this foundation just disappointed me. And now we're gonna move on to one that I'm going to say that I have an age-related issue too, because 
truthfully, back in my teens and my early 20s, this would have looked fabulous on me. I used to use this type all the time when I was younger and it looked great. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Perfector 4-in-1 Whipped Matte Makeup. So yes, whipped, so it's one of those moussey type makeups that kind of blend into the skin and give you almost a powder type finish. Now, if you remember, Maybelline used to make this, in fact, I think they still make it, in this kind of jar here that you unscrew, you dip your finger into, and it, it feels like the same formula to me, quite honestly. I think it's better in that jar. I mean, I guess it's maybe a little more sanitary in this tube, but I find that it's a little bit hard to get out of the tube because it's whipped, it has that air in it. I think they should just leave it in the jar. I also don't think they should call it Instant Age Rewind because I don't think that this does justice to their really wonderful Age Rewind products that work well on textured skin or skin with fine lines. I really think this is more, should be marketed more towards teenagers, early 20s, because it's really quick, it's foolproof to apply, and it looks so good on teenage 20-something skin. So I just think that would be a really great demographic for them to reach out to with this one. Okay, I'm gonna go in very quickly with this next one. It's not a bad foundation. It's the Tarte Shape Tape Cloud Cream Foundation. It was kind of a middle of the road foundation for me. There wasn't anything particularly remarkable with it, but it also wasn't a bad foundation. And the only reason I'm not planning to wear it in 2023 is because it's so, so pretty when you first put it on, but unfortunately I found that throughout the day it just started to show more and more texture on my skin, which I was a little bummed about because I find Tarte products to be really outstanding. It was just this one in particular that didn't last very long on me. And now on to what is probably going to be the most controversial choice in this video, and that is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. Now, have you guys tried the ambient lighting powders by Hourglass? Absolutely fantastic. I think they have such luxurious products, packaging, they have so many good products. So I was really excited about this one. It was $58, it comes in 32 shades, and they actually have a really nice shade range on this. Now, the reason why I say it's controversial is because you will find so many reviews online of people just raving about this one. It is their holy grail. What I want you to pay attention to with that is what skin type do they have? Because I feel like this is very, very skin type specific. In particular, those that I found that raved about it tend to have oily skin. The reason why is because I found this one to be kind of like the Lancome one. It seemed to almost be mislabeled because it's this soft glow foundation. So once again, I was expecting this to kind of be more dry skin friendly, be a little more glowy, maybe a little bit more dewy, and it really just ended up being very matte on my skin. I should be clear that I don't believe that a foundation has to be dewy because it has the name glow in it, but I do believe that it should at least have light reflecting type pigments in it if it's going to use the word glow. It should have something that when the light hits it, it's not absorbed by the foundation, but it bounces back a little bit. I just wanna clear that up because I don't dislike matte foundations, but I don't like matte foundations that just look very dull on my skin. And unfortunately, when you look at the pictures of this one, it just kind of made me look a little bit washed out, kind of dull, it just, it just didn't look great on my skin. One thing that I did really love about this foundation though was it has those optical blurring spheres in it, which is similar to the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, but I compare these two saying, if you want that blurring effect and you want a little bit of glow, try the NARS Light Reflecting. If you want that blurring effect and you want it matte, go for this one, because it really does do a nice job with blurring, almost to the point where I wouldn't even have to wear powder with this one. So again, if you're an oily skin foundation where you might love this, this could be your holy grail, but if you have dry skin, I definitely suggest you try a sample first just to make sure you like it before spending the money. As always, I'd love to chat with you in the comments section. Please tell me which foundation you tried this year that just isn't gonna make it to 2023 with you. Have a beautiful week. I'll see you soon.